Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call to order our first uh, hearing of the evening. Uh, this is the uh, application of Richard and Kimberly Golden. Uh, the Goldens uh, reside at 11 Antwerp Street, uh, Milton, Massachusetts. So the property is in the residency district. And uh, the application is for a variance. <clears throat> the uh, Goldens are uh, seeking to uh, build an addition uh, which is going to house a gymnasium uh, behind their house uh, on the right side property line. And they're seeking to uh, build a gymnasium with a setback of six inches from the right property line rather than the eight feet that are required uh, under the zoning bylaw. Uh, my name is John Leonard and I'm chairman of the Board of Appeals and I'll be uh, acting as chairman for this particular hearing with me this evening. Uh, to my immediate left is board member Virginia Donahue King and to my immediate right is board member uh, uh, Ted Daber. Uh, the original hearing in this application was uh, on August uh, 30th, 2000. Uh, strike it. The, the application is dated August 30, 2013. We had our first hearing on the application on October 15, 2013, and the second hearing was December 10, 2013, and the third hearing was March 18, uh, it is tonight, March 18, 2013. And we did uh, receive a communication from uh, uh, Mr. Golden that uh, as a result of uh, circumstances that are uh, beyond his control, particularly uh, family uh, reasons and traveling reasons. Uh, he's unable to uh, be present this evening, so he's asked the board to uh, continue this particular hearing uh, until April, until an April meeting. And Mrs. Uh, Fitzgerald, our uh, principal clerk, has uh, communicated with Mr. Golden as to whether uh, April 8th, uh, when the board uh, has several meetings scheduled uh, would be uh, an acceptable time for Mr. Golden. And so he has agreed that April 8th is the appropriate at time. And that, that's at 7.15 in, uh, in the evening. So uh, uh, do any of my colleagues have any, uh, any questions or statements with respect to, to the uh, application for continuance? No. Mr. David, you're already No, I don't. Okay, so all those in favor of uh, granting Mr. Golden's application to continue this hearing till April 8th at 7.15 at a, a meeting room, I think, to be determined. All right, I'm here. Okay, in, in this particular meeting room, say aye. 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 So uh, we'll continue the hearing till April 8th, uh, 7.15 at, uh, at 7.15, and uh, we'll be uh, adjourned for about nine minutes. Our next hearing uh, is at 7.45. Um, and we cannot start that meeting until 7.45. So we'll be adjourned for about nine minutes. Thank you. And you'll shoot Mr. Golden a note so that... I already did. I already forwarded that to you. Okay. With his confirmation that you could do April 8th. Okay. We'll just send him a little note that the, the board voted April 8th. Okay. At 7.15. Okay. And we'll be... I'll be back. Good. 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 Busy, but fine. It is, but it's kind of a boring bit to oh, yeah. doing a lot of pleadings and discovery stuff.
actually can't do that because he invited me over after the hearing. Oh, so. well, then he expected me to be What did you do? I've been doing better, but not as good as I could have. Okay. I did 86 average, and I did 86, 89, and 94. Ken Pin or Candle Pin? Yeah, we have a, um, we got a Wendy's and Wendy's. So. The last time I bowled was at the huge balls. It was at MIT when I was at my father's 25th reunion. That's pretty cute. What? It was in the 80s? Ten big ball or little ball? Little ball. Well, yeah, that's you know, this ball. Yeah, those are candle pins. That's candle pin. Isn't that ten pin? Well, they're all ten. Well, they're they're all ten, ten pin, but ten pin is the, is is the name that's used for the ones with the big heavy balls. Oh no. The no, big no, ball no. and the duck shaped pins, not the sticks. No, the straight sticks. You get the sticks. Yeah, yeah, candle pin is the little wooden ones. Oh. All right. yeah. 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 No, John. Yeah. 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 No, I was going to say that. <laughs> an eighty an eighty six with with. 10 pin and you would have been throwing a lot of gutter balls. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So it's easier? Y yeah, because the ball's heavier and it's easier to knock the pins over. Oh, okay. you know, the, the balls are smaller and much lighter. Where do they have the big balls? And you don't get as much pin action. Dorchester? Is that the Dorchester? Th there's one, yeah, there's one on Gallatin Boulevard. Yeah, we used to go down. We haven't been there in years because the kids are grown. But down to that, uh, what is it? The ice cream place and on uh, Hyde Park Avenue that's got ice cream and bowling. <laughs> it's got ice cream and candlepin bowling. It's got great homemade ice cream. Do you remember what the name of it is? No. Right. Homemade ice cream. The best place is next to Lambert and Dorchester. And the ice cream cakes are the best show I've ever had. Yeah. I think I've had. Used to be Carmel. Now it's the Boston Ice Cream Company. The, 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 the this place, this place is good too. I just can't remember the name. It's some guy's name, and it's um, gourmet ice cream Where and bowling. Is it you go down River Street mm -hmm. to Hyde Park Avenue, mm -hmm. and if you take a right, it's like in the first block on the left. It's it's like right by Cleary Square. Okay. Um, I just can't remember what that. Assuming it's still there, I probably haven't been there in five years. It's just, you know, they get maybe 10 little alleys and then they have a you know, nice, very good uh, homemade ice cream. I think we had one of the kids' birthday parties there. When we were, you know, How many kids you have? Just two. That's enough. breakfast with you every morning. Oh. These meetings are broadcasted. Yeah, yeah I, I heard they were in the morning. Early morning. <laughs> Just <laughs> start your day off, right? <laughs> Isn't that scary? Yeah. I paid them cookie, so I don't have to do <laughs> So where is the camera? Right there. Right there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do they close that one off?
Ben Sweet and where Frank Cortese. Oh, there you go. Where's the picture of Ben Sweet? Uh, no, it's, uh, well, I'll, I'll wait till last okay. one. Okay. Sure. Okay. Go the other way. Well, I didn't want to <laughs> flop off. During this one? Huh? I want to be heard. No. <laughs> I just realized that you know people are. Hello! Now because people are having their breakfast with you every morning. Is it on every morning? I don't know. I hope not. You've got to check the milk and that kind of But I heard that they're on in the morning, but I obviously haven't seen any. Thankfully. It's in the right track there, that senior citizen crowd. Mm -hmm. groupies. I've gotten a few calls as a matter of fact. Uh, so. Good job. You really stand up for all these people at Milton. <laughs> well, that's good. You do. It's kind of funny. Good job. You should be proud of that. That's right. I am. It's nice to be noticed that big one of hands. It's nice to be noticed for things that you do in a positive manner, not for Oh, aren't you terrible? All set? I think we're all ready to go. <clears throat> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call to, uh, to order our second hearing of the evening. Uh, this is the application of 552 Adams Street, LLC, <clears throat> which just happens to be located at 552 Adams Street. The application is dated February 13, 2014, <clears throat> and the applicant is seeking an amendment of an existing special permit which was issued by the Board of Appeals on July 26, 2012. Uh, the applicant is proposing to change the hours of the existing special permit, which uh, is for a Starbucks coffee shop, uh, from Monday to Sunday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., to Monday to Sunday, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, the property lies in a uh, in a business and residence C zoning district, um, and the applicant has, has filed uh, some papers which I'll um, describe for the record here. My name is John Leonard. I'll be acting as chairman for this particular hearing. Uh, to my immediate left is board member Virginia Donahue King, and to my immediate right is board member Theodore Daver. Daber. The rules of the board are such <clears throat> that uh, first we'll hear from the applicant. Then we'll hear from any uh, interested persons who have questions of the applicant. We'll hear from people who wish to speak in support of the application and uh, those who wish to speak uh, in opposition to the application for an amendment, uh, if there are any such persons present. Uh, we're tape recording the proceedings uh, this evening. Uh, it's a rather large room. The acoustics are poor, so that we'd ask that uh, before anyone uh, speaks, uh, tell us your name and address. Speak up nice and loud and clear so that we'll have an accurate record if we have to revert to the tape in order to prepare a decision in this case. In addition to the advertisement, which I've paraphrased, we have the application, which is dated uh, February 10, 2014. Uh, we have a letter from Joseph Prondek, a building commissioner, uh, dated uh, February 13, 2014, indicating that uh, an amendment uh, by the Board of Appeals would be necessary to change the hours of the uh, a particular establishment. Uh, we have a letter from the Starbucks Coffee Company dated February 11, 2014, uh, basically <coughs> uh, uh, indicating the type of amendment they're looking forward and requesting Mr. Prondack to issue a denial letter so that the uh, matter can be scheduled for a hearing before the Board of Appeals. Uh, we do have the uh, decision that uh, the Board issued, now it's dated this, uh, June 13, 2012, uh, and we also have a plot plan of land 
entitled, it's from Allen and Major Associates, Inc. It's dated June 1st, 2012, and this is the, uh, the plan which was uh, involved in the earlier uh, special permit application. So that uh, we, we thank the applicant for uh, submitting all of these materials and we'll have these documents as evidence at this particular hearing. Uh, who's going to be making the presentation for Starbucks? I can speak. Sure, come on up. Uh, make yourself comfortable as your okay. associate can come up if you'd like to sure. as well. Why don't you introduce yourself and... Uh, sure. Uh, my name's Dan Brennan. Uh, I reside at 50 Holt Road, Andover, Mass. Uh, I handle permits and licenses for Starbucks in the New England region. Um, we are presently uh, getting a building permit for a renovation at this store. Um, that's when the hours came into question with the building inspector, Joe, and we realized that we were restricted to 6 a.m. Um, so that kind of prompted us to submit for the uh, change in hours. Um, as far as I know, there haven't been any issues uh, regarding our patrons, but um, I think uh, the manager could maybe speak a little bit more on, on what goes on. Uh, we were originally trying to open up at 5.30, um, and that's when it got brought to the attention of uh, the building department. Um, so we decided since we're going through the motions, we should uh, see if we could get a little earlier with 5 o'clock. Okay. What, uh, tell us about the uh, nature of the improvements that you're making at the facility. Um, mostly just cosmetic. I mean, the, uh, the C count's going to remain the same. Um, it's basically just we uh, wipe out the service line area and put new millwork in and, and uh, move some equipment around, but the, uh, the service line is staying relatively in the same area. Um, it's just something that we do, give it a, a fresh little update to match other uh, new stores that we build. Alrighty, and uh, do you want to uh, discuss uh, why you need, uh, or at least uh, requesting the 5 o'clock start rather than the 6 o'clock or a 5.30 start? Um, well, the, uh, the other coffee shop across the street, uh, I believe they have opening hours at 4, 4 a.m., and uh, <laughs> I discussed it with the uh, district manager, and he said that, you know, if we could uh, open up at 5, that would be great, you know, seeing how we're going through the process. So. Okay, what, what's the name of the coffee shop across the street, do you know? I believe it's uh, Dunkin' Donuts. I think I've heard of that company. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and they open at, uh, I, I've did you heard, say 4 o'clock? That's what I've heard. For business, yeah. not just to set up or to right. open the doors. That, do you know Yes, that? we currently, um, I'm sorry, I'm Ganaya Idris, and I am the um, manager at Okay. The, Could you do me one favor? Yes. Would you be kind enough to spell your name so I can have it accurately in the record? Okay, no I problem. hate to misspell people's names. No problem. G. Yep. A. Yep. N. Yep. I. Yep. A. T. And the last name? I. D. R. Did you say D or B? D. D, D. as in David. Yep. I. D. R. Yep. I. S. Great. Welcome to the Board of Appeals. <laughs> Thank you. What do, um, what do you have to say? Um, we currently, um, Monday through Friday, um, op set up for business at 430 in the morning, and I am pretty aware that um, Dunkin' Donuts are open for business at that time, so they get there before us, and we open currently at 5 o'clock. Do you, uh, did you do any research of the, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts, uh, either special permit or license, and to, to see I whether... Can't. No, I haven't. To see whether they were if it was authorized to do that, or... Uh, no, I, we, we didn't get a decision that Okay, so you're, you're staying with your own business and not researching other people's business. You're right. I apologize. No, no, you don't have to apologize because 4:30 is an awfully early starting right, so time. Then I just don't remember granting a special permit or uh, having that issue come up. Mm. Um, so I was just wondering if you happen to know. I don't personally know. Okay. For sure. No. All right. So uh, why, why don't you tell us uh, uh, what what do you do with uh, 
4, 4.30 in the morning? Are you setting up for the day? Yes. Um, it takes us about 30 minutes to set up for the day. At exactly 5 o'clock, um, Monday through Friday, we are open for business. On the, um, the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we open at 5.30. Okay. So now you want to have formal permission to open at 5 o'clock um, <laughs> yeah. seven days a week. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I have to confess to you that I, I really haven't had the opportunity to visit the Starbucks uh, coffee shop in East Milton Square at 5 in the morning. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what's going on at 5 in the morning? Well, is, we, it, is it very busy or yes. is it slow? Or? No, it's busy. We do have customers that are waiting for us to open the door. We have about three to five customers every day waiting for us that early in the morning. Sometimes they even bring in our newspapers. <laughs> okay, now are, are these grab and go type customers, or are these customers who uh, want to sit in the coffee shop and enjoy their coffee? It's a mix. We have we do have regulars that sit and enjoy the coffee until about five thirty, six o'clock, and then they go on about their day. And then we have some people that grab and go. Okay. And uh, and not. I know you're not a statistician and you didn't perform any fancy studies and you don't have to. But if, uh, if I asked you from uh, 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock, do you, do you know approximately uh, on average during the week how many customers you'd be servicing during that period of time? On a daily basis, I would say probably 30 customers from 5 to 6. Okay. And of that 30 customers, do you know how many would be grab and go and how many would be people who park their car in the lot and then? We'll say 50-50. Okay. Yeah. And did you, do you happen to take a look across the street in the Dunkin' Donuts? Do you, do you know whether they're, uh, they have a drive-through permit, I think, there, do they not? No, I think they shut down their drive-through. They did? Yes, I okay. believe so. Okay. So do you, do you see a, a lot of cars going into that establishment at between 5 and 6 o'clock as well? Yes. Okay. You didn't do any, any studies or anything of how many people are going in there or not? No. Okay. No. Um, have you received any uh, requests from customers uh, to open early, as early as 5 o'clock? No, not earlier than five, no. Okay. And how many of the customers uh, between five and clock of, of these 30 customers, do, do they pull into the parking lot to the rear of, uh, of your facility and then walk around or walk in? Um, I would probably say the ones that are going, um, the grab and goes are parking in the front. Yep. Um, the ones that are going to stay there for a little bit, they definitely park in the back. But the grab and goes normally just pull in the front, get their coffee, get back in their thing, and go to work. Okay. And is it fair to say that uh, when you're doing your prep work to, to open, is all of that prep work done inside the restaurant? Yes. That there's nothing out in the parking lot no. or, or out front or anything like that? No. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And... Um, even though you've been opening uh, a little earlier than the special permit uh, requires, uh, or allows, I guess is a better way to put it, um, have you received any complaints from, from neighbors or people in the vicinity or customers that you shouldn't be opening so soon? I think we, re no, we receive complaints if we open late. Okay, <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's an aggressive uh, group of people. Um, let me uh, let me ask my colleagues if, if they have any questions. Mrs. King, do you have any questions? Um, have there been any complaints about deliveries being too early because of it opening up early? No, our deliveries are overnight. We're not even there when we receive our deliveries. And they have their access to get in and get out. It's overnight. Yeah, and there's no complaints about that. Mr. Deba. Um, excuse me for a second. Okay. Uh, yes, that's how you understand. Okay. All right. Um, 
uh, just a question. You, you have how long then have you been opening at five? Or I'll probably say a year now. Okay, so for a year, there's you've been opening at five, and, and as you say, there haven't been any complaints. No complaints. But, okay. Just to speak on that too, I don't think it was passed. I don't think Starbucks understood that in the uh, special permit that they were restricted to those hours. I don't think it was passed on. I know that the uh, special permit expired after five years and it was recently renewed and maybe it just didn't get passed on. I'm not sure why um, we, we didn't know about the hours till we submitted for the, uh, sp for the renovation. So I know it sounds like we've been just trying to open up without going through the proper chains, but we certainly would have if we knew in time. Let me ask you a no. That we we appreciate your sure. candor. Um, at five o'clock in the morning, other than the Dunkin' Donut shop across the street that's open, is there are there any other establishments that are proximate uh, to your business that are also open, Not that or is it just the the two coffee shops? I think you, that that I know. I'm sorry. Was that? Yeah. Oh, it was I just the know. two coffee shops because they're directly in front of us. And sometimes when we, we only know about their operation hours because when we're running late, most of my employees will sit in their establishment until we get there, so. Okay. I'm glad I came. No, you're good. Good. Uh, let me, uh, if you have nothing further to add, let's see if there's anybody who has any questions or comments sure. uh, regarding your particular uh, uh, application. Is there anybody this evening who uh, has, uh, has questions of... Uh, of uh, Starbucks regarding their particular uh, application. I have a question, sir. Sure. Okay, so we're come on up. We have we're televising this hearing, uh, probably on a delayed basis. So uh, just make sure I you. Done my uh, hair. I apologize. No, that. You you look terrific to me. <laughs> you look too. great. So just uh, speak into the microphone. Tell us your name and address, and welcome sure. to the Board of Appeals. Thank you. I'm Jamie Georgia. I live at 45 Bassett Street in Milton. I'm a new resident to Milton, and uh, happy to be at my first Board of Appeals meeting. Um, oh, good! You'll have to become a regular. We have a whole, <laughs> we have a cult following sometimes. So, we, uh, <laughs> um, so uh, a question I would have for Starbucks: Will any, uh, would granting this permit to open earlier than you were allowed to open previously result in any improvements to the to the parking lot? Um, we uh, are pretty close to the parking lot it actually overlooks our backyard and just uh, get headlights in our in our windows regularly uh, key fobs uh, opening cars and sometimes setting off car alarms and just the idea of it being uh, even earlier than it already is is, is uh, you know, not not our favorite thing We're, we would be a lot more supportive of the idea if if Starbucks were willing to sort of uh, do take some steps to enclose that parking lot a little a little more, so that uh, the sights and sounds that go on at you know at 5 a.m. stay in the Starbucks area and, and don't uh, all at least come cascading out into the residential areas mm -hmm. either the bus. Jamie, if I could, let me let me do one thing. You've asked a very pertinent question, but before that question gets answered, I want to ask you two more questions. Okay, I'm looking at the butter list here, and. Uh, did you recently purchase this residence? Uh, about six months ago. Okay, that's months. right. Because I, I have 45 Bassett Street uh, owned by the Granadas, but yes. then the name is stricken out. Okay. So <laughs> could you tell me, first of all, welcome to Milton. Maybe you, you were in Milton beforehand. How do you spell your last name, sir? Georgia, just like the state. Okay, great. And you purchased this place uh, six uh, months? Uh, in July. In July, okay. Now, could you just, what's that? Oh, I, yeah. oh okay. Now, well, Mrs. Fitzgerald is better at her, her um, record keeping than I am. Uh, he, the name of Granada is stricken from the Abada's name, but uh, the mailing address has now been changed to you. So uh, we Great. do have you recorded. That's a, that's a good thing. Um, can you describe where, in relation to the uh, the parking lot, your residence is located? 
Uh, we don't directly abut it. It's uh, Franklin Street is the street that uh, provides the entrance to the parking lot. Uh, there's a duplex building that uh, our backyard and their backyard abut, and their backyard is directly uh, next to the parking lot, and then just beyond that is our backyard, uh, okay. and it kind of slopes downward. So you know the so you we get both the have a clear view of the, of the parking lot the way it's uh, okay. Set up. And, and how how far would you say your uh, property line is from the uh, the parking lot? The actual parking lot about twenty feet. Okay. Do you want to uh, try to answer uh, Mr. Sure. George's question? Um, I'm not completely familiar with the, the line of view you're speaking of, but is there a fence of any sort there now, chain yes. link? Or? There's, uh, it's actually a variety of fences. Uh, the whole, whole thing is surrounded by a chain link fence, and a chain link fence is the only thing that is separating uh, our, our side of the parking lot from, from our properties. Uh, on the, f if you pull in, our, our, our house would be to the left. The far back wall straight ahead, uh, I believe that the people in the next property over have erected some sort of uh, wooden fence there to, to more or less block in that, that wall. Uh, and that actually also extends part of the way down the left wall that we're concerned about. Uh, but then right when it exposes to our line of sight and our, and our property, it, it becomes just a chain link fence. So, um, you know, headlights come right in our windows, and, and yeah, there's no, 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 nothing for the sound to ricochet off and kind of uh, dissolve a little bit before it gets to us. And if if Starbucks was willing to do that, we would be a lot, a lot keener on, on them. I know my my wife loves having you guys as a neighbor, and uh, <laughs> I'm not much of a coffee drinker myself, but uh, I am completely in, in support of East Milton development and want to see businesses prosper there. But could I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, in the area proximate to the uh, chain link fence, is, is there any soil there or uh, uh, dirt that could support uh, some plantings or arborvitae or something? Well, or that, is it all paved? In the, in the summer, it, the condition is, is improved um, because there are some, I don't know what kind of shrubs they are, but some shrubs grow up and it at least creates some sort of natural wall there. But for the past uh, five five months or so, it's it's uh, you know a different story. All the all the plants die back, and it's just like uh, you know you look right into the to the parking lot. Let me let me ask you this: Did you sure. did you bring any photographs with you that would show the chain link fence in the proximity of your house? Or? I, I did not. I could show you on I, Google Street View makes it uh, kind of obvious, but I. Okay. Assume that that's not easy to pull up right now. So, uh, well, it, not in the middle of the hearing, but um, is this part that we're talking about the parking area? Is that far away from the building? Is that like towards the back of the building? Yeah. Well, so. The building is here. Uh, what's the street? It's on well, Adams. Can we uh, use that site plan? Yeah. Do you, do you want to see this? Uh, take a look at this. This is the front door of the Starbucks. Here's where you pull in. Yeah, so this is where you pull into the to the um, parking lot. This is the area right here we're, we're concerned about. This is all chain link fence, but there's beyond the chain link fence over here, there's another wooden wall and a concrete wall, I think, as well. And there's a wooden wall that extends, I think, to about this line here. But then all this is just uh, a, a simple chain link fence. and that extends around to here. And where is your property in relation to? Uh, so there's a backyard here, and then ours would be kind of right about here. Okay. And so, and so it, the, wood, the wooden down. fence goes right up to about somewhere in this area here? Yeah, I think it. if this is a property line, then yeah. that's probably where it, okay. where it and, stops. Okay, and you know, well, is this, uh, I guess this is about 80 feet, is that right? I'm, I'm not a, uh, an expert at plans, looks, but is that yeah. looks like it's 81 feet, yep. more or less. Exactly. And it's 64 feet from... 
So what you are suggesting is that Starbucks do some type of uh, planting or uh, screening so that the headlights would, will not adversely affect your property. That and the, and the sound from the you know people opening and closing their cars and a little chirp of, of car alarms, uh, just getting a little a little uh, something to bounce it back. But uh, obviously, it's not going to completely diminish the sound. But uh, be a, just a nice bit of uh, separation. That that that's our you know a wooden fence or I, I don't know what kind of plantings. I'm sure there's some plantings that are year round that would that would be suitable. Yeah, usually people put in um, arborvitae under these circumstances, and they okay. can grow up to eight or ten feet, and they can grow fairly broad. They're not very expensive, and they're tough to kill. Oh, that sounds good. I mean, and that they're would easy be, to maintain. Yeah, no, that sounds good too. Uh, we, yeah, we're not picky. We just like something that would absorb some of the light and sound that comes out at you know at that hour. We have two two small children that we're raising right next door, so anything we could do to tamp it down a little bit would be a, be a big help. Okay, that, uh, that makes sense. Well, let me ask you, do you know where most of the people park when they come in that early in the morning? Do they park more proximate to the building or do they park back in this section? I think it's approximately to the building for the short distance of walking, especially during this time of the season. They want to be closer. Okay. Um, um, let's, Thanks for that. Let's, sure. We'll leave that there for now. Okay, Mr. Uh, Brown, I know you, you didn't... Uh, it was actually my dad that came and did the re renewal. Okay. If, that, if that's what you were going to say. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all right. But I know uh, all about it. I was with him when, uh, when he did it, so... That, that's all right. In terms of... Uh, um, Mr. Uh, George's particular issues sure. here. Um, I know you probably have to go back and, and talk to somebody at, at the company, but uh, yep. um, I think you understand the issue. I do, yep. And um, do you have any expectation that uh, Starbucks would look reasonably favorably on uh, some type of reasonable sure, uh, buffering and yeah, I think that we could comply. The only thing is, uh, I'd have to, you know, follow up with the landlord. I know uh, Louis Falcone uses that lot as well, mm -hmm. um, and it's his parking lot. But I'm sure he he would be in favor of it as well. Um, I don't know. Uh, have you ever seen sometimes how they do the the ribbons through the uh, chain link fence to block it out? I don't know if that. If that's an option, or if the planting is something that uh, the board would rather, and something like that. Uh. We're, we're not the architectural review board, <laughs> but but I have to tell you the uh, the metal through yeah. the zigzagging through the fence, to, to me looks very very tacky and uh, yeah, cheap. Um, so I would tend to think some type of uh, fence uh, and or plantings would be appropriate. Okay. Um, let, let me ask Mr. Georgia, do you have any? Think further to add other than your few comments. Uh, no, I'm just thank okay. you everyone for this. No, that's all right. Now, what we can do here, uh, we, we can still consider this application. Um, and the, the applicant has indicated that they'll consider putting some plantings in. Uh, what usually happens under these circumstances is uh, would leave the applicant and, and you to see if you can resolve this issue in some type of uh, cordial and amicable fashion and, and have some type of uh, mitigation put in. Um, and, and if that happens, that's, that's wonderful. Um, since you are in a butter, even if we granted the relief sought tonight, if uh, Starbucks, after the hearing, decided to do nothing, you could still come back to us um, and, and, and request this type of um, remediation, okay? So uh, there are several ways we can handle this. So let, let's do this. Uh, thank you for appearing. Thank you for your comments. Let's see if there's anybody else who has any interest in this particular hearing. So is there anybody else who has any questions or wishes to speak? with respect to this application. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi. I'm Chloe Georgia. I'm married to Jamie Georgia. I'm a physician. 
Um, I live at 45 Bassett Street in Milton. Good. We hope you do, because your husband's <laughs> living there, too. Welcome to the Board of Appeals. Thank you. What would you like to say? Um, I just wanted to say I have two, we have two small children. They're ages two and a half and one, and it's very hard sometimes to get them to sleep and to sleep throughout the night and to not wake up too early in the morning. We have a lot of white noise machines to try to block out the trucks and the people who come in at Starbucks early in the morning and they park in the parking lot. We hear the alarms, sometimes their lights are on. Um, the lights don't bother us as much upstairs, but the sounds. And so I don't know if you know about a recent uh, medical article, and I think it was New England Journal, that said that white noise machines can affect the development of the young brain. So we're aware of that, and we're trying to back off on the white noise machines to block out that sound. But we are just, um, I'm worried about that. I'm worried about 5 a.m., like noises and waking up and trying to get them to sleep through the night. So that's just me personally as a mom um, living in a commercial area. I also want to say that our street is a great street. It's a lot of young families. The family next door has a baby, is going to have a baby soon. And so we're just trying to, I just want to say that we love Starbucks. I love Starbucks. I love it there. But if it's too early and we have our kids and they're waking up at 5 a.m. because people are coming in in the parking lot, I am concerned about that. Are willing to reach a compromise if there's some way to block the sound with a fence or something and, and do that. But I just wanted to make sure that that was said. So would you prefer a fence rather than plantings? Yes. You would? Okay. Absolutely. You mean a solid fence? Yes. Yeah. Usually fences are eight feet high in Milton, to the best of my knowledge. That's the type okay. of fence you'd be yeah. talking yes. about. Yeah. Okay. A continuation of the fence that was that's already part of that parking lot. Just continue it on now, because there's already a fence there. Do you know whether that fence is owned by the abutting landowner, or is it? Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what what type of fence? It's a wooden it's fence. It's wooden. Mm -hmm. Is it old or is it new? Or it looks. I mean, it looks sort of new. It doesn't look incredibly old. Okay, so you'd want something consistent with that yeah. particular fence, as, as, a, as opposed know. to one of these white plastic-looking uh, fences or vinyl fences. It's really up to to them, but it would look nicer if it were continuation of the wooden fence. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you for your comments. Thank, Thank you, you for coming tonight. Thank you. Um, is, so let's ask, is there anybody else present here who uh, wishes to ask the applicant uh, any questions? And there's no such person present. So is there anybody here this evening who wishes to speak in support of this application for an amendment to the special permit? And there's no such person present. Uh, let me ask, is there anybody present this evening uh, who wishes to speak in opposition to this application for special permit? And there's no such person present. So. Uh, unless my colleagues have any questions, do you have any further questions? Mr. Damon, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to end the uh, evidence portion of this uh, hearing. And under the open meeting law, we're required to uh, uh, consider this application in open session and to, uh, to vote on it. Uh, and I think we're going to do that right here and now. So, uh, Mr. Damon, do you want a beard? I do. Uh, I, um, after hearing um, the Georges, uh, you know, I'm uh, clearly of the opinion that if, uh, if we are going to uh, grant the requested relief to Starbucks, um, it should be an express condition that, uh, that a fence uh, be required and, and uh, you know, uh, optimally, something that's agreed upon, as you suggested, um, and, and worked out between them, but certainly something that will satisfy the concerns about um, light and noise. Mrs. Um, King. Well, I agree. I guess I don't have to add anything. Okay. Well, look, and I, I agree with both uh, Mr. Daber and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. King. Um, it's always difficult living relatively close to a commercial area. It has its advantages, uh, but it also brings some detriment as well. And uh, I, I think that the uh, George's uh, uh, request is, uh, is in good faith. Uh, they, they don't oppose the uh, permit. Um, 
for the amendment to the permit. I'm somewhat surprised that uh, the folks at Dunkin' Donuts are opening up at 4.30 in the morning. That's a mystery to me. Uh, I, I don't even know what, what the basis of their hours happens to be or whether there is a special permit or a variance in effect. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have that information in front of us. But uh, I, I do think that um, it's a beautiful store. We have no complaints from, from neighbors about how uh, the Starbucks is run in terms of uh, uh, being a clean, uh, well-maintained facility. And uh, Mr. Brennan has told us that they're uh, basically uh, improving the facility to bring it up to the state of the art. And, uh, that's, that's great for the square. It's great for Milton. Uh, but I, I, I do think the George's um, requests are reasonable. Um, I, I don't think it's a very expensive endeavor to, to run a fence that's reasonably consistent um, with uh, the existing fence. Um, and um, I'll have to turn off my white uh, noise machine. Maybe that's the problem I've been having for the last 10 years. But that's kind of scary if... Uh, if people are suggesting that it can, can affect people's uh, people's brains, but it's uh, it's obvious that uh, um, Dr. Georgia and, and your husband uh, shouldn't have to be concerned about their children being awakened at uh, 4:30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. It's difficult enough when they get up at 5:30 or 6 o'clock in the morning uh, with the grandchildren. So um, yes, I, I agree with my colleagues and. Um, I think that we, uh, I, I would vote in favor of this amendment um, and would uh, put as a condition uh, that a, a fence um, across that portion of the, uh, I think it's the 81 foot area, uh, be constructed in, uh, in a substantially similar manner as the existing fence. That's what the Georges want. It doesn't seem un unreasonable. And we start to get involved in plantings. You get involved in all kinds of side issues and maintenance issues. And while you'd have to maintain the fence, I think fences are easier to maintain than the uh, um, the Nabavite or some other plants which can become diseased. So um, so my view is uh, I would vote in favor of the amendment to the special permit. Uh, with the condition that uh, within uh, a reasonable period of time, two weeks, three weeks, I don't know how long it, it takes to, con to construct a fence, maybe 30 days, I, I don't know. Uh, but with all due dispatch, that uh, the defense be constructed there. Um, I don't know what the footings have to be. I think there's, it's probably not a big deal that spring is finally arriving. Um, and I don't know how long it takes to order fences and the availability of them, but uh, so I, I think we can, how do you want to deal with the time period within which a fence should be uh, constructed? You know, within 30 days, uh, 45 days, with the proviso that you'll use your best efforts to, to do it as quickly as possible? Sure, I, and I was kind of hoping for something more like two or three months only because to coincide with our renovation, and you know, it'll be a little bit warmer out for the guys digging the holes for the and whatnot. Yeah, but spring is Thursday night, I think, or something like that. I, I think that's too long to be frank about it. I don't I don't think that Georgia should have to. It's uh, going to be another couple of weeks, too, just while we wait for the appeal period and all the rest of that. Yeah, too. I was going to say, is, it, is the time period going to run from, it won't run from now, it will run from when the decision becomes final, right? Yes, yes. So there's some time. Well, to, that's true, too. That, yeah. You've got a couple of weeks built into that just in getting our administration through it. Yeah, and you've got a 20-day appeal period as well. So you've got a couple of weeks for us to do a decision. The decision is rendered, it's recorded, and then there's still a 20-day appeal period. Sure. Um, so you, you basically got uh, a month or six weeks or something like that. So. Is that? That is reasonable, thank you. Is that fine? So what, why don't we say, uh, you want to say even within six weeks from the date the decision? Is entered, or do you want to run it from the time the decision becomes final? Um, well, it's, I mean, they wouldn't start on it until it becomes final, right? Well, right, but they could do the planning and, and yeah. get
get everything ready to go. It, my guess is it would take a day to do that fence. It's not a not a big deal. Mm -hmm. How about within 30 days from the special, the amended special permit uh, becoming recorded, operative, yeah. become yeah. final. Okay. And, and likewise, you, you you know about recording these special sure. permits and all yeah. of that. So, um, so with all all those in favor of granting Starbucks amendment to the special permit as applied for, with the condition that uh, in or within 30 days of the special permit becoming final, the uh, applicant will construct a fence across the 81-foot uh, area uh, that is uh, reasonably consistent with the existing fence that's out there. And my, my request would be that you would uh, uh, sit down with the Georges and show them what you're doing and show them what the fence is going to look like and so that it becomes nice and harmonious and convenient. Okay. Okay. So all those in favor of the amendment with that condition? Aye. 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 So uh, I guess congratulations on your special permit <laughs> and uh, congratulations on your new fence. <laughs> I hope things work out. Thank you for coming today. Thank we you. really Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. And with all of that, uh, we have no further